here's today's engineering problem. So we have this space on my desk, and it's in a corner. It's bounded by two partitions. Running along the top of the partition is my prototype Santa Fe Super Chief. It's all wafflers, and as of now, it's about half done. It's probably got, I think it's got four more cars that need to go on it, and then two more engines, another A and B unit. So it goes all the way back into the corner there. I built this trestle to go on top of this shelf storage thing here. And it wraps around the corner and then goes on top of the partition. But now what it needs to do is curve and go along this partition. So by the time it's done, it should come over to about here. Yep, right there. So, obviously I have to move this junk off the desk, but then what I'm going to do is build a 30 inch radius trestle across this way to connect over here. So that's going to be um, kind of cool to do. Trestle bridges have always fascinated me, and building one on an HSO scale would be a challenge that I looked forward to. The curved trestle presents an even greater challenge. The first thing I needed to do was to get inspiration from photos of trestle bridges, and the bridge at Goat Canyon near San Diego is probably my favorite trestle bridge. The first thing to do was to take some paper, lay it out on the table, and trace the curve that would result in a 30 inch radius curve which would make it easy for the Walther's cars and not take up too much room on my desk. Next, I traced out the path of the tracks on a sheet of masonite. I used masonite because I had a piece of it in the garage. I cut the masonite to fit the corner of the desk. One idea would be to have the terrain go all the way back to the corner, but I chose to make it just as the support for the trestle. Hence, there is space behind the model in the corner. The model had to be 13.5 inches high to meet the top of the ledge, so I cut the basic shape of the mountains that would go against the walls. I took the design of the bents from this bridge design that I found somewhere on the internet. I don't remember where. I started with the prototype width at the top of the trestle and used the same angles as the design and drew the bent on two sheets of paper. Each bent would be the same except for the height. That way I could use one template for all the bents. Unlike a real bridge, I was going to design the terrain around the bridge, so I decided on the height of the bents and then used wood supports on the model where the bents would be placed. I also knew that there would be no way that I had the patience to match this up so perfectly, so I approximated it, knowing that I would have to fill it in with plaster later on. I used gauze impregnated with plaster sprayed with water to form the basic shape of the mountain and then I plastered over it. This part is like sculpting and there's no right way or wrong way to do it. I ended up with a very rocky terrain that pretty much matched my vision of how I wanted it to look. I used scale lumber from northeasternscalelumber.com and I highly recommend them. Each piece of the bent was cut using the template as a guide. I used two scale 12 by 12s on the sides as a guide so that each bent would have the correct angle and it served as a guide for gluing the pieces in, in place. I started with a very top piece and then measured and cut each of the horizontal supports. Then I cut each of the vertical 12 by 12 supports, sanding the end so that it would fit properly. After each vertical section was finished, I cut and glued a 3x10 horizontal support in place to add strength.
I took the bent off the template and put in the cross members. After I made all the bits, I airbrushed them with diluted acrylic paint. I used a combination of burnt rumber, raw sienna, and black. I cut the concrete supports out of balsa wood, each the proper length for the bent that it would support, and then painted them gray to approximate concrete. I sanded off the bottom of the bent so the glue would adhere to the balsa supports better and then glued them on. I also used weathering pastels on the bents and supports and sprayed them with clear matte finish. The next step was to put the trestle together. These have to be built upside down because the most important thing is to make sure the top of the trestle where the track goes is level. Using the template for the curve, I taped it onto a piece of masonite that would work as a hard surface to build the trestle. I used a piece of track to outline the outer edges of the ties and this is where the longitudinal support for the track would go. I glue lamped two scale 12x12s together and then bent them to conform to the shape of the curve using small track nails to hold it in place. Next I marked on the longitudinal supports the location of each bent making sure that it was perpendicular to the support at that point. I started at the ends and worked towards the middle, gluing each bent to the longitudinal track and making sure it was absolutely vertical. After the bents were in place, I cut and glued in the horizontal 3x10s, making sure that the bents were aligned vertically and evenly. The glue dries pretty quickly, but in some cases I wrapped a rubber band around a pair of tweezers and used that as a clamp. Hi girl! Hey! Hey, sweetheart! Yeah, how you doing, huh? Sweetie, bye. Oh yeah. man, huh? Did you have a good nap tonight? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. good nap. She's about ready for some food. Yeah. Right. After the horizontal supports were in place, I cut each cross support between the bents to fit the location where it would go and then glued that in place, one outside the vertical support and one inside. Once I got to this point, I was pretty happy because the trestle now had a lot of strength. Still, I had to be very careful with it not to bump or break anything. Next I airbrushed the horizontal and cross supports. It was a bit tricky getting the inside of the opposite side, but several coats over time worked. They aren't evenly painted, but that also gives it a more weathered look. I put the trestle in place and started the process of filling in the gaps between the bottom of the concrete supports and the mountain. I did this by using a 60cc catheter tip syringe with a watery plaster mixture. I had to build this up over time and it took several days to get things looking like they should. Meanwhile I started painting the rock. There is no correct way to do this. I used burnt sienna, raw umber, black, white, and some yellow ochre acrylic paints diluted with a watery paintbrush and just stippled it on, painted it on, and just sometimes fingered it on. The plaster is really rough and it takes a bit of work to get the paint into the crevices so that you don't end up with a bunch of white spots where the paint didn't get in. I had gaps between the ends of the trestle and the mountain on each side, so I used a balsa wood to make forms for concrete approaches on each side of the trestle. I used fairly thick plaster, pushing it against the forms to avoid air pockets. Nevertheless, I ended up with gaps that had to be filled and sanded in after the forms were taken off. I painted these gray. 
After filling the gaps under the concrete supports with plaster, there was plaster that needed to be scraped off the sides of the supports and some that got on the trestle. I knocked these off and touched that up with paint. More or less completed, I moved it to my office and put it in place and glued the track on the trestle using books to weigh it down and I let that sit overnight. At this point it could be done, but I might add some trees and shrubs to give us some color. Right now it sits on my desk and I really couldn't be happier with it. Now I just have to complete the Super Chief prototype. Thank you.